This video is going to show you the slides that are in the PowerPoint presentation for the principles of design. The first work that we're looking at is by Leonardo da Vinci and it's called The Vitruvian Man. I use this example to give you an idea of what one type of balance is. If you click the button, you will see the word balance pop up. Balance means that the images that are, you are using in your composition are weighted in a specific way. There are two main types. There's formal and informal. And within those headings, there are different terms. The first one we're going to look at is an example of formal. And the word is symmetrical balance. If you touch your key, you will see the word symmetrical pop up. What that means is that, is that there is a mirror-like reflection on the left and the right side if you draw an imaginary axis line down the center. So in the Vitruvian man, and like all humans, we are essentially the same on both sides of our body, a mirror image, if you will. The next image is by Leonardo, De, sorry, it is by Michelangelo and it's called The Creation of Adam. This is an example of asymmetrical balance. If you touch your key, you will see that word pop up. Asymmetrical means that it's balanced, but it's balanced differently on both sides. And if you look at this one where the hands are, are about to meet, it's not actually the very center of the painting. And that is a key to making it work well. Don't ever try to balance out different things on two sides when you have a center line down the center. It doesn't work as well. Okay, so asymmetrical is a natural looking composition and it does take a bit of uh, work to make it work well, just so you know. The next work that we're looking at is by Georgia O'Keeffe called White Flower. This is an example of radial balance. So if you touch the button, that word will pop up. Radial means that everything is emanating out of the center. Now this is a bit of a natural looking radial one because it's not exactly uh, precise, but if you think of a star, it is all a symmetrical balance as well. Okay, so everything is emanating out of the center. The next word we're looking at is emphasis. So this is called Yellow Cow and it's by Franz Marc. So this one has a few different ways to make the yellow cow stand out. The key words that we're looking at when you click the button again, are contrast, location, isolation, convergence, and the unusual. So the contrast is that there are not very many light spots in the painting. There is the white area here, the yellow cow, and a few other little light areas. There's also other warm colors, but predominantly the yellow of the cow stands out because it's contrasted against the other colors. The location, the cow is placed mostly in the center and it's large. Isolation, it's the only cow in the presentation or in the composition. Convergence, convergence means that the lines point to something. So these lines here and here, they kind of draw your eye in as well as the diagonals and the curves on the, on the actual cow. It does all bring in your vision to look at the object. And lastly is the unusual. Well, it is unusual to have a yellow cow in a composition. It's also unusual to have all those ridiculous colors, but that was the goal he was trying to create in creating this landscape with a cow. The next image is called Harmony in Red is by Henry Matisse. And in this one, we are talking about the word harmony. Harmony has to do with similarities. So what do you see that's similar in this painting? Yes, there's red, there is blue. The blue has been placed down in a very specific pattern. The blue is on the wallpaper in the background and on the tablecloth in the foreground. And in that pattern, there is vases with flowers. And then in reality, or in what we're perceiving as maybe the reality of this painting, there's flowers in the vases here, echoing that. So there's a similarity, there's a repeat. There's a repeat of these vases that have liquids in them. There's a repeat of the fruit along it. So when you are repeating things and they're similar, not necessarily identical, but similar, that creates harmony. 
I'm using this one by Norval Morisot called Shaman and Disciples to represent the word variety. Variety means that you are using differences. Now in this painting, you can see that there are also similarities. So there is harmony because there is a repetition of the same colors. There's a repetition of similar shapes and there's a repetition of the actual shapes that are being used. But we are talking about variety. So the variety is, is that there are three different men. There are animals, there's this like dinosaur guy. There are birds being shown. And then there's these kind of weird things that are like, is that a turtle, is that a crab? Are these snakes? We don't know. There's also this really interesting vulture-y looking guy coming out of his hair. So there's lots of different colors being used as well. So differences, that's the key word. The next image is by Vincent van Gogh. It's called Starry Night. I'm using this slide to represent movement. There are two main types of movement. There is compositional movement, which makes your eye look in specific areas in the painting, closely connected to emphasis, but it's done usually, usually done through curved lines or diagonal lines where the artist has led you to look through the painting in a specific way or it can have actual movement or give a feeling that something's moving. In this case, these curved lines in the sky are doing both. They're giving us the feeling that the wind is blowing and swirling around the night sky. And then we have this movement of this uh, cypress tree moving upward. All of these lines are gearing us to look in here into this little village in the foreground, shooting us back up again and swinging us in and out of the painting over and over again. Movement. Then we have Broadway Boogie Woogie. This is by Piet Mondrian. And for this painting, I chose the word, uh, this is the painting I chose for the word rhythm. Rhythm has to do with a visual pattern or beat. The, pe the beat is created by the motif, meaning the positive space or the space that we see, and the negative space is the rest, it's the space between the actual thing we're seeing. When we talk about rhythm, we talk about the five different ways to create rhythm, and we used the term frapper in class to remind us what the five words were. Here they are, flowing. That means the composition has curved lines. This one does not, so it's not that. Regular. This means that there is something consistent in the artwork that creates a pattern. And in this case, I would say it's the vertical and horizontal lines. Even though they're not regimented a specific way, like a, a specific grid pattern, like of a chessboard, it is giving us that stability and that repetition and clarity. Even all the shapes that you see are all vertical and horizontal, like rectangles. So that's repeated. Alternating. This is not alternating like a checkerboard between black and red, but there is an alternating kind of pattern where yellow is the color between the other colors. So that is being repeated, repeated. And progressive means that there is a gradual change. We don't see that in this artwork. The last one is random. And we do see that there is a random approach to placing the larger uh, sections of color. That is rhythm. Then we move on to proportion. Proportion has to do with size relationships. And in this case, I'm using the painting by Andrea Mantagna called The Lamentation of Christ. This is a depiction of Christ after he's been taken down and crucified on the cross and has been laid in repose in the tomb. In this artwork, he is using a technical device called foreshortening, which means that you are placing the human body in linear perspective. And in this case, you have to manipulate the size relationships of one part of the body to another in order for it to look realistic in that viewpoint. In artworks, you don't necessarily have to have people or animals to maintain proportion. In the last painting, oops, I'll go to this one. There is proportion in this one too. It's the size relationships of the rectangles compared to like the larger rectangles compared to the smaller rectangles and even in comparison to these white spaces that you see. The last painting is by Victor Vasserly. It's called Vega Pur and it is our example of gradation. So gradation means there is a step-by-step -step change. In this case, there are there is a step-by-step -step change 
in color. You can see that it goes from a brighter yellow here and it starts to duller, dull down. It's probably mixed with purple in order to change the color tone. If you look here at the red, it is brighter and as it goes back in space, it gets darker and darker. Interestingly though, the blue stays the same throughout. The green changes, it changes a little bit here. It looks like as if it gets brighter. In fact, I am wonder if you, or maybe not brighter, but lighter. So those are the changes in color. There is a change of shape, meaning that this object here is a bit of a square as it goes down in, into the illusion. The shape is changing and becoming flatter and flatter as it goes around the supposed sphere that we're seeing. In the background, you can see that the shapes are completely flat. So the, sh the form of the shape is also gradually changing. It's going from flat to three-dimensional gradually. And you can see it's flat on the outside and it looks as if there is a three-dimensional sphere in the center of it. Gradation. So now you've gone through all the slides. I recommend that you go through the Principles of Design glossary sheet and then begin the rough copy of your Principles of Design sketchbook assignment. The rough copy is due this week. The good copy will be due the following week.